Welcome to the video tour of Smart Science Labs, the only real science online. Smart Science is currently HTML5, meaning it can run on just about any computer, any tablet, and even a smartphone. So once I've gotten to my list of different activities in Smart Science, I will choose one that I'd like to complete. In this case, we're going to look at an activity called Seed Pollution. Every smart science lab contains five basic parts that a student needs to complete, plus an extra credit. These five parts are think, hypothesize, explore, reflect, explain, and the extra credit is called extent. First we have the think page. This is some basic background reading, plus some warm-up questions, or a formative assessment. This reading can be differentiated at typically three different levels for every student. Once the student has read through their background and answered their warm-up questions, they'll press submit to submit those questions to the teacher. They go into a database and get automatically scored and the student will immediately see which ones they got right and wrong with an explanation for each question. Close this quiz to move on to the Hypothesize page. On the Hypothesize page, the student watches a tutorial video showing some basic information about the lab they're about to do. Also, they're given a procedure summary talking about how the lab is done. With this information in mind, this background video and this procedure, and with the central question of the lab, here, how pollutants affect seed germination, the student may either write a hypothesis or choose from a list of pre-written predictions that we supply them. Here I am writing a hypothesis. So I will write, if seeds get acid, then they don't germinate well because XYZ. You notice that this is very easy for students to write any type of hypothesis they'd like. Once it is written, I will press the enter key on the keyboard and I can add new hypothesis to my list. By choosing add hypothesis I now have a hypothesis in my list and I can click on it if I'd like to go ahead and test that hypothesis which I will do. Now I press the enter button to get started with the lab. Now what makes smart science so special are two basic things. The first one we've already started to see the hypothesis creation, and the commitment to scientific method. We ensure that students can create open-ended hypotheses, collect sets of data, reflect on whether or not the data supports or refutes the hypothesis, and then write up their findings in a lab report. And that is the scientific method as we have embodied it in smart science. But the central piece of that involves experimentation and collecting data, and that is what makes smart science so special is the use of real experiments. So when we go ahead and pick out an experiment we'd like to watch, say, putting acid on the seeds at a weak concentration, we then press the play button below the video to watch the video from beginning to end. And this is a real time-lapse video of seeds germinating under this condition of a light amount of acid. Now there is a measurement button here on the lower right below the video. When you press that, you can start getting data of some type. For example, here we're going to measure any seed that's germinated by clicking on it. If I don't see a seed, I can press the next button to advance the clock. As time goes by, eventually I should see some seeds that have germinated, and I'll mark them by clicking on them. This is the unique technology we have developed, the ability to measure data point by point from the frames of a video. Also, as we are measuring this data, you will notice that points are appearing on my graph and in a data table. So we're tabulating and tracking the data that the students have measured. Once the students have completed a few of these different videos, they should reflect on whether or not the data supports or refutes their hypothesis. For example, I said if seeds get acid, they don't germinate well because X, Y, Z. Here we have put a weak bit of acid on. What if I was to put a very strong amount of acid on the seeds? Let's press play and watch the results.
It seems that none of the seeds have germinated, and when I press the measure button and advance through the frames of the video, I will not have any seeds to click on because none of them have germinated. Of course, you could go and click on seeds as we don't limit the restrictiveness of how to collect data. But if I'm following the directions, I notice that I'm not supposed to click on any because none have germinated. Now you notice before I move on, there are some supporting pieces here. We have a help page to help with how to navigate labs. We have a details page, so some background on the science behind this lab. We have a scientist page showing a relevant scientist who worked in this historical area of science comparable to what this lab is about. We also include some SI units, a dictionary, and an interactive vocabulary. So if I click on the vocabulary list, I can go ahead and look up any of these words, such as, say, kilosecond, meaning 1,000 seconds. And now there's a light green quiz button, so I can take my post-lab quiz, my summative assessment. You notice these questions typically deal with vocabulary, graphing, and the theme of the lab. Once the student has answered these questions, just like the warm-up, they're going to go ahead and submit their answers. It's going to be submitted into the database, and they're going to get a score back if they passed the quiz. This is set by the teacher, so you can actually allow your students to retake quizzes that they don't pass. Here I have failed, so I am allowed to retake the quiz, but I haven't seen my results yet. Furthermore, I can write a lab report. This is the critical part at the end of each lab where the student can reflect on what they've learned. So by using the different graphs and charts and looking at the data that they've collected, we'd like them to write a brief introduction, a procedure, a results section, and finally a conclusion. Also they see their quiz grades and at any time while they're writing they can save their work with a save button. Once it's been saved it can be archived as a PDF file or submitted into the teacher page. If they do choose to archive the PDF, they can print this out easily for use in a portfolio for the student. Once again, everything is saved in the cloud, so the teacher can access any of the student's work at any time. Thank you for watching this brief tour of a smart science lab about seed germination with pollutants. Please contact us anytime to get more information about smart science and what we're doing to improve science education.